Good morning boys and girls, welcome to another episode from Bible Corner. It's Christina here with you today and we're so glad you're able to join with us and we do hope you have a really good time as we come and do some singing, as we learn a memory verse and as we come to our story this morning and we hope you will learn a lot from God's Word today. So we're going to kick off our meeting by singing the chorus deep and wide, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. I think we're going to have to up, get up on our feet for this one. There's lots of actions for this, okay? Remember, deep and wide, there's a fountain flowing deep and wide. So I want you to sing your very best and the words and the music will be up on the screen for you to follow along with. That was fantastic singing and of course I'm sure you did those actions really well as well. Right, we're going to come to our memory verse. Now memory verse we're going to look at today is found in the book of Psalms. Now Psalms is a wonderful book in the Bible filled with many wonderful verses in there to encourage us and encourage us especially during times of trouble. And many of the Psalms are written by King David and King David went through many times of trouble in his life but he always knew and was assured that God was with him. You know, when we are in times of trouble, we can turn to the Psalms and see there what King David wrote. And we can even take encouragement from those verses as well. And the verse we're going to learn today is one of those verses that we can take encouragement from when we are in times of trouble. And that verse is found in Psalm, the chapter 55, verse 17. Psalm chapter 55, verse 17. And we read there in that verse, that verse goes, Evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Say that one more time. So the Bible says in Psalm 55, verse 17, evening and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. And this here verse is talking about prayer and how wonderful prayer is. And the person in this psalm, they are saying that at night time, at morning, at noon time, all during the day, I know I can pray and cry aloud unto who? Unto God. And what's the rest of this verse tell us? And he, that is God, shall hear my voice. He will hear our cries and he will hear our prayers and he will help us when we are in times of trouble. So we're going to try to learn this verse together. And to help us learn this verse, we've got some actions to go with all the words in this verse, which will hopefully help us and help you to remember what the verse is teaching us and what this verse is all about. So the actions go like this. So we'll start with the Bible says in Psalm 55 verse 17. And then for evening time, what do you do at evening time? We well, go to sleep. So you're going to go to sleep, all right? So this is evening and in morning you wake up, big stretch. So morning. And at noon, what do you do at lunchtime? Hopefully you have your lunch. You're going to pretend you're eating. Will I pray and cry aloud? And he, we're putting up to heaven, remind us of God. He shall hear. We use our ears to hear. Hear my voice. All right, so we're going to go evening and morning and at noon. Will I pray and cry aloud? And he shall hear my voice. All right, have you got it? All right, let's try it together. Okay, after two, we'll go. The Bible says in Psalm 55, verse 17. And then we'll use all to join with me as we say the rest of the verse. Remember to do the actions with it okay, as well. Okay, and I'll do the actions too to help remember what we're doing. All right, so let's go have a go at it after two. One, two. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 55, verse 17. Evening and morning and at noon, Will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Well done, that was very good. If you're doing all those actions, that was really well done. We'll try it another time again after two. One, two. The Bible says in Psalm chapter 55, verse 17. Evening 
and morning and at noon will I pray and cry aloud and he shall hear my voice. Good job, that was really well done. We're gonna leave that there for today, boys and girls. But I want you to remember that verse there in Psalm 55, verse 17. And even how it teaches us that any time during the day, we can come and pray unto God, especially when we're in trouble. We know that he will hear our voice. Okay, we're gonna come on to our next chorus before we come to our story today. And that chorus we're gonna sing is, Isn't he wonderful? Wonderful, wonderful, isn't Jesus my Lord wonderful? that was really good singing of that chorus and again that chorus reminds us how wonderful our God really is. Okay we're now going to come quickly to our story boys and girls but before we do that we're going to pray first and you all know the drill to pray by now. We're going to A fold our arms, B bow our heads, C close our eyes as we come and pray on to God and ask him to help us to learn and remember what we're going to learn in our lesson today. So let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for all we've learned already today in our, in our meeting. We thank the Lord for that wonderful memory verse and to know that even now we can come and pray unto you and you will hear our voice. We just pray now, Lord, you give us help as we come to our lesson, to our story today. Help us to listen and to learn from thy word. For your sake, we ask these things. Amen. All right, boys and girls, for our story today, we are going to be traveling way back in time, back to the book of Exodus. And we're going to be going to the children of Israel, or the Israelites as they were known, or sometimes known as the Hebrews. Now, I've talked about these people before in our Bible corners. And if you remember rightly, the children of Israel, they had been slaves in Egypt under Pharaoh. But if you remember, God sent Moses to bring the children of Israel out of Egypt and they were traveling towards the promised land. They were traveling towards that home that God had promised them, the land of Canaan. And we're told there that Moses, he led the children of Israel out of Egypt, through across the Red Sea, and then towards the promised land. And that was a big journey that they took. But as they got towards the promised land, we are told that just when they were right on the edge of the promised land, that they, Moses sent spies into the land of Canaan to see what the land was like because people were living there and there were cities there, there was kingdoms there. And so Josh, or Moses sent spies into the land of Canaan. But 10 of those spies came back and they said that they couldn't defeat those that lived in the land of Canaan. And so the people, they disbelieved in God. They didn't believe when God said that he would help them to take over and to get back to that land that he had promised them. And because of their sin against God, because of their lack of faith in God, God told the children of Israel that none of them would it go into the promised land. None of them would step foot into the promised land. None of those who had came out of Egypt would get into the land of Canaan. And instead, they would spend the next 40 years traveling through the wilderness until all of those that came out of Egypt had died and their children had grown up. And then eventually they would then go into the land of Canaan. And so the children of Israel now spent their time wandering through the, la the wilderness right next to that promised land, but not quite getting into it. But they weren't alone there in that wilderness. Now it would have been a tough place to live. Of course, the wilderness is not much there, not much food, not much water. And they had all these difficulties to overcome. You know, God always provided for them. He always provided bread for them every morning. They always made sure there was water for them to drink. But even though God had provided for them again and again and again, we're still told that again and again and again, the children of Israel, they grumbled against God, they complained against God, and again, they lacked faith in God. 
We're told that the children of Israel not only had to face up against um, lack of food and water, but also there was other people living in the wilderness that they were traveling around, other kingdoms and other kings and other people. And they were not very happy that the children of Israel were traveling through the wilderness. Now, it wasn't just 100 or 200 people. There was millions of people here in the children of Israel. It was a big, big group of people. And a lot of the kingdoms saw this big group of people as a threat to them. And we're told that one of those kingdoms was the kingdom of the Amalekites. Now, the Amalekites have been keeping a close eye on the children of Israel. And the Amalekites had had enough of them wandering through their land. And so the Amalekites decided they would come and attack the children of Israel. Now, they did it rather sneakily. You know what it's like if you're in a big group, maybe when you were back at school and you went for a day out somewhere, the big group of people, there's always those people at the back who were called maybe the stragglers. They're always there and they're always taking their time and maybe running off somewhere they shouldn't be going and maybe a bit slow. And that's what it was like with the children of Israel. Right at the very back of the group, there would have been those people who were maybe older, who couldn't keep up very well. Maybe people who had hurt themselves, who were sick, perhaps mums with their young children. And there was those there at the back who were just a little bit slower than everyone else. And they were a little bit more vulnerable than everybody else, a little bit weaker. Instead of those up at the front there with Moses, who was a leader, and Joshua, who was his right hand man. And Joshua is important in our story today. Joshua there up with Moses. And instead they were strong men, ready for fighting. But there in the back of the group, there was those who were a little bit weaker, a little bit slower. And this is where the Amalekites decided they would attack. They would attack right at the back and attack those who were weaker, who couldn't stand up for themselves, those who were slower. And through them, then take over the whole army. And that's what the Amalekites decided they would do. And they came and they attacked the children of Israel from behind. Now we're told that Moses heard this. He told Joshua, now Joshua was Moses' right hand man. And Joshua was a great leader. He was a great fighter. He was a great soldier. And we're told that Moses told Joshua to gather up an army together and to go round to the back of the children of Israel and to fight the Amalekites. And so Joshua gathered his army together. Now the Israelite army wasn't very well trained. They didn't have as much fighting experience as the Amalekites in their great army. And so Joshua was going to need a little bit more help. He was going to need a little bit more help to defeat this great army that was before them. And who was that help going to come from? Well, it was going to come from God and God alone. No one else could help Joshua. Only God could. And Moses knew this. And so Moses told Joshua that while he went and fought, Moses would go up to a mountain that overlooked where the battle would be and Moses would pray. Moses knew what we learned in our memory verse today that if he prayed and cried aloud, God would hear his prayers. And so Moses went up there to the top of the mountain and he began to pray unto God. And we're told that Moses, when he prayed, he held his arms out. And when his arms were held up, Joshua and the army, the Israelite army, won against the Amalekites. But when Moses' arms fell down, we're told that the Amalekites won. You know what it's like, boys and girls. If you're trying to hold your arms out, it doesn't take very long for your arms to get tired and for your arms to fall down. Unless you're super strong, you've good arm muscles in your arms, your arms will soon drop down. And that's what happened with Moses. He couldn't keep his arms up. And so when his arms fell down, we are told that the Amalekites, they won against the Israelites. When his arms stayed up, Joshua and the Israelites won against the Amalekites. What were they going to do? How were they going to keep Moses' arms up? We're told that up the mountain with Moses was his brother, Aaron, and another man called Hur. And we're told that Aaron and her, they got a little stone, a little stool for Moses to sit down on. And they stood either side of Moses and they held his arms up. And there they stayed and we're told they went there and all the day was over. They were up there on that mountain praying. And Moses was able to keep his arms up because he had those two people helping him. Had Aaron and her helping him. You know, boys and girls, we're told there that Joshua and his army won. They probably shouldn't have won. Their army was a lot less well trained and the Amalekite army was so much better, but because Moses prayed, they won. And God helped Joshua and his army to defeat the Amalekites, all because Moses went up to that mountain and he prayed. And boys and girls, what does this really teach us? Well, this um, story teaches us all about prayer and how important prayer is and how powerful prayer is. And prayer is something that is really important, especially in the life of a Christian. Prayer is something that is vital. But you know, boys and girls, maybe you're not saved. Maybe you haven't asked the Lord in your heart. Maybe you can't say that you're a Christian. Where is a prayer that you must pray? 
to come and ask the Lord into your heart. We often call it the sinner's prayer, coming and telling God you're sorry for your sins and asking him to forgive you. And that is the prayer that God will answer. And we're told that God would always hear and answer our prayers. And as a sinner, that is the only prayer that God will hear from you and that he will answer. If you come and pray unto him and ask him for forgiveness. And then as Christians, we know, as our memory verse taught us, that God will always hear and answer our prayers. And this story reminds us of the power that there is in prayers. When Moses prayed, Joshua and his army won. And no matter how big our problems may be, we know that when we pray, God will hear and he will answer our prayers. We know this story also teaches us that we can also ask other people to help us in prayer. Just the same way that Aaron and her helped Moses kept his arms up and more than likely they were praying to you up there in the mountain. You know, we can help ask others to help us to, in prayer. Ask them to pray for something. That's the wonderful thing about having Christian friends and having those around us who are Christians. We can come and we can ask them, will you pray for such a thing? Maybe you've got someone in your family who's not saved. Maybe a brother or a sister, maybe your mum or dad, your granny and granda, and maybe you've been praying for them for a long time. Well, the wonderful thing is you can go to your Christian friend and you can say, can you pray for my family? Can you pray for my mum, my dad, my brother and sister that God would save them? And you know, people can help you in prayer, just like Aaron and her helped Moses in prayer. And in the same way, we can help others in prayer. Maybe you know someone who needs a little bit of help in prayer. We know that you can go with and ask God to help them and to answer their prayers as well. And another thing this um, lesson teaches us is that we can pray for others who are doing a work for God. Just like Moses was up there in the mountain praying for Joshua and the Israelite army who was doing this work. They were fighting the Amalekites. So you and I as Christians, we can pray for others who are doing a work for God. You can pray for your minister. You can pray that God would help him every week as he gets up and preaches from the Bible, that God would show him what to preach on every week. You can pray for your Sunday school teacher or your children's meeting worker, that God would help them. You can pray for missionaries all across the world that God would help them too as they do work for him. So boys and girls, we see here from this story how wonderful prayer is and how it's so important that if you're not saved that you come and you pray the sinner's prayer, that you come and ask God to save you. And then as a Christian, we see how powerful prayer is. This story reminds us how powerful prayer is and that with prayer, God can do anything. And you know how important it is that we ask, we help others in prayer and that even that we can ask other people to pray for us and to pray, ask them to pray for things that we want to pray for. And then we can pray for others who are doing a work for God as well. So boys and girls, I hope you enjoyed our story today on the children of Israel versus the Amalekites and even how again, important it shows us how prayer is. And as our memory verse tells us that it doesn't matter what time of the day it may be, when we pray and cry aloud unto God, he will hear and he will answer our prayers. So we're gonna finish off now, boys and girls, we were a prayer. So again, we're gonna fold our arms, by our heads, close our eyes, and we're gonna ask God to help us even remember what we learned today and from his word, let's pray. Our dear Heavenly Father, we thank thee, Lord, for this story of the children of Israel and the Amalekites and even of Moses up there in the mountain praying for them and how that reminds us how important prayer is. Lord, help each one of us, even as Christians, Lord, to realise, Lord, that we should be coming in prayer unto thee every single day. And we pray especially, Lord, for those boys and girls who are not saved, they will come and they will pray unto thee and ask thee to take away their sins. With us now, Lord, we pray. For your name's sake, we ask these things. Amen. Well, boys and girls, that's us all finished for today. I really hope you enjoyed this week's Bible Corner. And we are, of course, really glad you're able to tune in with us today. Now, remember to look out for the worksheet that we put up at the end on our Facebook page. You can download that and see how much of that worksheet you can do from today's story on the children of Israel and the Amalekites. Now remember, if you'd like to get in touch with us about anything that you've heard today, or if you're concerned about your salvation and want to know more about how you can be saved, please leave us a wee comment below or send us a message on Messenger and we'll do our best to get back to you and even answer any questions that you might have. Now remember, don't forget that if you've missed any of the Bible Corners that we've done over the past few weeks, you can always go back and enjoy watching them at another time. So until next time, boys and girls, from all the team here at FPC Kids, goodbye and God bless. Mm -hmm.